there's this culture today, and I think it relates to wokeness and so forth, that you kind of like, in some ways, shelter children from all a certain range of things and expose them dramatically to another range of things. Yeah. Um, but the, it's the sheltering part. I mean, this book, the Thomas Sowell book, doesn't hide the realities yeah, of the Jim hardship. Crow yeah. and the difficulties and this this kind of whole realm. And I just, I, I found that interesting and different from the limited number having you know nephews uh, of children's books that I've seen recently yeah and so that's that's another thing that I, I believe very strongly about and sort of treating human uh, treating children as human beings homeschool philosophy we follow is Charlotte Mason and so I like kind of slip into that dialogue a little bit but she treats children as born persons and so this idea that children are capable of you know eating the whole meal is part of the idea of how we treat children's literature and so children understand that there is hardship and that there is difficulty in this world and and I sort of struggle with this when I read um, when I read any number of books with my children like oh that's like Aesop's fables I would say 80 percent pretty violent <laughs> pretty scary absolutely and so one of the first questions that I had when I had my old this was three or four years old was, do I really want to be reading this with her? This is scary and this is violent. And what I noticed and what I sort of uh, talked to other homeschool moms and, wh and what they told me, and I've absolutely sort of found this to be true, is they're not scared when they're on your lap. And all of these things, they will eventually become uh, exposed to these ideas, to life and death and all these things. And what better place for them to learn about the difficulties and the injustices of uh, this world than on their mom's lap? And that's the safest sort of entry into the hardness of life. And so, especially with the Thomas Sowell book and, and going through our, all of our books, um, the Ronald Reagan book is also, there's, there's the introduction of the alcoholism of his father um, in that book. And that, that's a difficult topic, but that's unfortunately a topic that a lot of children are going to be familiar with in their lives or become familiar with, the idea of, of alcohol addiction and dependency. And it's treated very gently, very carefully. We're, we're not trying, we're not going for shock value. But this was part of Ronald Reagan's life story and it, and it helped shape who he was as a person. Mm. And what better way for kids to be exposed to it than very gently very, very subtly, but on their mom's or dad's lap. It's really interesting. You hear about, you know, critical race theory not being taught in schools, right? And I always, whenever I hear that, I think, well, okay, perhaps that's true for young children. You're not going to teach the theory right. to young children, but it's the praxis. It's kind of the whole kind of ideology being kind of infused into the educational materials, right? Yeah. That's the question. So I guess my question is, why do you see this as a problem? Or what? What is the problem that? What? What does it bring in uh, to children that you don't that you don't want to see? So for children, I think the biggest issue with CRT, in my, in my personal opinion, is that for white children, it, it teaches them that they should feel sorry for being white when it's just that's just who you are and that's okay. It's okay to be white. Um, and for black children, I think it's actually m more damaging because it's teaching them that they are inherently victims and that they they have been victimized by everyone around you and, and by everything around you. And so it's a pretty toxic way to raise a child to either peg them as a victim or victimizer. And all of those things come with emotional baggage um, and there's no need for that because a white four-year-old boy is not a victimizer and a black you know four-year-old girl is not a victim they are equal humans and that was something that we really wanted to drive home especially in the Ronald Reagan book or not I'm sorry the Thomas Sowell book um, that you know he had difficulty absolutely but he still you know pulled himself up by his bootstraps and didn't take any favors and he didn't he didn't want any shortcuts and he was better for it and that's a lesson that i think every child needs to hear that the shortcuts in life are not going to um it's it's the it's the road that is the journey the journey is as important as the destination and um, and that's an important lesson for for any child to hear and so you know, you, you kind of indict the publishing industry for, you know, 
prioritizing wokeness within the literature, mm -hmm. within within the writing and the picture books. And so how, how does this actually manifest? Like you've presumably you've seen things that you were like, okay, no, this isn't going to be something my kids are going to be reading. Yeah. Like, what what are the sorts of things that you're so seeing? Yeah. It's it's so funny. I was actually I was at my husband's office right before I came here, and I was going to grab it, and I forgot. There's a a new picture book out, the ABCs of AOC. Mm -hmm. So A is for activist, B is for Bronx, and there's all of that very overt indoctrination. But I think what's more damaging is the very subtle indoctrination. And so I've spoken to a number of authors and um, different people who are much more intimately familiar with the children's book industry, the mainstream of it and how it stands. And what they've told me, the, the most insidious thing that they do is slip in gender ideology within in a book that's completely separate. So a counting book or, or things like that. There's, there's a, a, a girl who thinks she's a boy in a book about counting, for example. And the t from the teacher's side of it, which I've, I've heard from, from literacy experts who work in schools, is they're not teaching it at explicitly, like a boy can be a girl, and that's, that's not what they're doing. They're using these sort of gender ideology books in lessons that are totally separate. So, you know, if you're learning this, a sentence structure, you could use a book called I Am Jazz, which is about a, a young boy who decided he was a girl, and it's the subject of a TLC show. It's a very famous transgender child and so that book I am jazz isn't used as an indoctrination tool at at the read aloud which by the way then would have to be put on the curriculum list that the teacher is is supplying to parents but instead a teacher would use that to teach about sentence structure well, yeah and that's actually that just it makes me think of this other theme that there seems to be this sort of activism around teachers. You say that the teachers are the one yes. who are kind of driving this whole the, the, through their purchasing power. There seems to be this sort of um, a idea that the teachers have the right or even perhaps the duty to function outside of the realm of the parent's knowledge because otherwise how can we get our plan across or yeah. ideas across, yeah. right? You pretty much verbatim told me what I heard from a teacher last night. I have been, t you know, this is this is a topic that animates me sort of in my professional life as an opinion writer as well. And I spoke to a teacher literally last night who said that same thing. She, they, they see it as their job because the, I mean, these, these knuckle dragging bigoted parents are not going to introduce these topics to their children. So it's our job, it's our responsibility to make sure that they're being exposed to these topics so that when they grow up, they're not bigots like their parents. Presumably the uh, Virginia gubernatorial election or the Virginia elections with uh, you know Governor Youngkin being yeah. elected yeah. sort of speaks to what parents think about that. I think it does but I, I'm not sure how much of the governor election was about CRT and how much it was just they kept the schools closed for a year and a half in Northern Virginia and people uh, were really mad. Youngkin um, did not have Randy Weigarten uh, give his closing statements <laughs> so that I mean that that can be pretty damaging um, so but I, I think that I think it's all intertwined but it's hard to sort of pin down what percentage um, is CRT. I, and I think that the school closures added to a lot of this also. And, and I think that it, you can't really separate it because a lot of parents over the course of the school closures saw firsthand what their kids were learning. And they were alarmed by it and they should have been alarmed by it. So I'm not sure how much I would put it on CRT versus I think just parents have lost faith in the education system as it stands, rightfully so. There seems to be, or many people I've spoken with, let's put it this way, a number of people I've spoken with tell me that one of the things about, you know, in these woke books as you describe them is that they're explicitly not patriotic or even anti-patriotic. Yeah, and absolutely. So, so explain this to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is this is sort of part and parcel of, of the whole sort of woke and progressive ideology, not necessarily as it pertains to kids, but, you know, America is a flawed nation. So um, I, w one of the things we want to do in the future with Heroes of Liberty is do a Founding Fathers series, because a lot of books that tackle the Founding Fathers will talk about their slave owning and will sort of degrade our Founding Fathers. And that's not to say that they were um, that they were not imperfect people. They were absolutely imperfect people. But uh, there's so many dimensions to issues like slavery and, and the fact that many of our founding fathers did own slaves. But the impression that you get when you read mainstream children's literature written about people like George Washington, there's 
such a heavy emphasis on his slave owning that it really detracts from the larger picture of who he was and who he accomplished. And I think that it's important for children to know about those things. And we're not whitewashing this, this, you know, not great part of our history, but at the same time, we don't want them to, to hate America. We don't want them to hate themselves. Mm -hmm.